Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're having a lovely day. So I did a couple of videos recently where I was reviewing Amazon electrical products. I went over some crimps over here that just do not crimp. If you take a look over here, you'll see that this crimp very easily pulls off with just my fingers. And over here, I went over some fuses that do not fuse. These are two amp fuses and I am putting six amps through them. Not just short term, I actually went to go to the bathroom. I got something from my car. I went upstairs to take a phone call. I sat back at my desk and several minutes later, it was still allowing six amps amps to pass through a two amp fuse. I put eight amps through the two amp fuse. The shit doesn't even blow. And I wanted to go over a video that was done by another channel that I think does really good work that demonstrates the practical reality of what will happen when people purchase these garbage products. And I also wanted to go into Amazon's response to this issue because I think it really says a lot about how much they give a shit or don't give a shit about you as a customer when you're purchasing stuff in their online marketplace. So the first thing to go over is what is the practical ramification of this? Because I was going over how this could theoretically be bad. Here you have a a really cool channel. It's called the Car Care Nut. And the gentleman who fixes cars in this channel is going over the story of a customer that installed aftermarket lights on their new Toyota Tacoma truck. Now, after they installed aftermarket lights, they weren't really working great, and then they blew a fuse. After it blows a fuse, the customer, with instead of trying to figure out why it blew the fuse, they just replaced the fuse with another one. And after replacing the fuse with another one, this happened. Their light stopped working altogether. Some stuff on their truck stopped working. And he opened up the fuse box and the relay box, which which is responsible for making the turn signals blink and all that kind of shit, and you see this. So what you see over here, this is the beginning of a healthy trace. So this is going to be a little pathway where voltage is brought from one side to another, and what you see over here where it's starting to turn copper, this is the solder mask. That's that green stuff. It's kind of like insulation so that, you know, if I, if I were to drop a penny on this, like between here and here, it would not short because the solder mask is kind of is kind of like an insulating material. It's also good just in case to protect it from nicks and scratches and stuff like that. It starts to turn copper. And then when you get over here, it kind of starts to look like this burnt looking soot. And over here, you can see that it's actually come up from the board. So on this side, you can see that the trace is properly attaching to this pin. And on this side, you can see that this is starting to fold up upwards because it has burnt itself so bad, it's come up from the board. And this is a serious problem. When you purchase a two amp fuse that does not blow until you put 10 amps through it, you have to wonder, does this company also make fuses that are labeled 10 amps that don't blow until you put 50 amps through them? And what are going to be the practical ramifications of that? In this case, this customer replaced a fuse and as a result of replacing a fuse with, call me crazy, I'm just gonna take a wild guess that this is a fuse that would get five stars on amazon.com. Uh, you end up with a $750 repair bill because you destroyed everything in the vehicle. This is why it's very important in my opinion when you're purchasing these types of products that try to purchase them from specialty retailers and why I think it's important that we start slowly trying to return back to purchasing things from vendors that actually care. I'm not the biggest Home Depot fanboy by any means, but I will take going to my local hardware store versus going to Amazon to buy a crimp or a fuse any day. Even if the product manager is an idiot, at the end of the day, there's some connection, there. like there's some level of responsibility. If that product happens to burn my car down or kill me because it is negligently produced, there's something there in their brain at my local hardware store behind the person that's purchasing the products and stocking the shelves where he knows that if their product burns my house down, that's going to cause a confrontation that he doesn't want to have. As a result of that, he doesn't sell these type of garbage products in his store. Again, I'm not going to say that this works every single time. On average, they're going to care. Now, you may say, well, no, actually, they, they sell, these places sell products that are dangerous. I've bought bad products at Home Depot or my local hardware store, this or that or the other. Okay, fine. Uh, but, but here's the thing. When you talk about your local hardware store, hypothetically speak, just hypothetically, let's say that somebody that has 2 million YouTube subscribers got over 300,000 views in a video proving that your product is not just bad, but functionally dangerous and may kill people. Do you think that they may put that product aside to test it and then see what's going on with it before keeping it in their online store? Let's take a look at what happened. So this video over here is about a month old. I produced that on December 16th. It's mid-January right now. So it's been almost a month when, since I went over this. I left this product a one-star review and I reported it to Amazon. This video is almost a million views. Let's take a look if I were to click onto the product itself. Well, let's go to the site over here. And as you can see, this product is still on Amazon right now. Not only is it still on Amazon after I reported it using the report an issue with this product or seller link, but if you take a look and try to find my one-star review, it doesn't actually show up. So if I click one star reviews, you will see that there are other people that have left one star reviews that cite my YouTube video. But as you can see over here, when I scroll down, if I go most recent, my review does not show up. 
other people's reviews show up mentioning me, but my actual review does not show up. Let's go back to the fuses, because the fuse, I think, is an even more dangerous product here. This fuse, if I go to Nylite fuses, this is the one that I featured in that video where I was putting 8 amps through a 2 amp fuse and it still worked. Not only is it still there after I have reported it and also rated it one star, but if I click on reviews and I go to most recent, um, you'll see that, again, other people are saying that these are dangerous fuses and citing my video, but my actual one-star review does not show up. So, A, they have not taken the products down after, between the two videos, a combined one million views about these two products, with me very clearly demonstrating how to reproduce the experiment and demonstrate for yourself that this product is dangerous garbage. B, my review that was one star for each of these products has not shown up. So essentially my voice has been censored in telling you that this is a dangerous product. So it's one thing to be negligent and say, you know what, I am not going to look into any of the products in my marketplace, even if they are dangerous, even if they may cause people's cars or God forbid their homes to look something like this with their wiring. It is another to then actually muzzle the people that are trying to tell people that on your own platform so that they don't buy garbage. This is not just negligence at this point. This is, I do not give two shits of a fuck if people are hurt as long as I get my fulfilled by prime fee from that fucking vendor. At the end of the day, Amazon can pretend that they care about this and they pretend that they want to crack down on this in their marketplace. Uh, they talk about problems with fake reviews and dare I say it, I, don't, I think the problem with fake reviews is only half the problem. The real problem, in my opinion, is that they are deleting or withholding real reviews from their platform. If there are fake reviews in these products, the fake reviews wouldn't be that bad. The fact that there are, let's say, 200 fake reviews in this product would not be bad if there were 2,000 real reviews that were able to actually call it out for being a piece of crap. But that's not the case. And I know what a lot of people are going to say. You can't have a marketplace of this size. You can't have a marketplace where anybody can sell anything and this, that, and the other and be able to actually have the stuff be quality. And that's the big problem that I find with modern tech companies. They come up with these ideas where they want everything to be something that can be managed by an algorithm. Everything should be able to be managed by KPIs, KPMs, key performance indicators, and key performance metric for those of you who don't speak MBA bullshit. They're more than happy to make money off of the fact that they get these fulfillment fees from all of these different vendors, and they're also more than happy to take 10 to 15% of their actual money from their revenue, but when it comes to like taking accountability or responsibility in exchange for that money that they're making, God forbid they have to do that. There are a lot of things that I can't do. There are a lot of things that would not be feasible for me to do, and the way that I deal with that is I don't do them. There are people that ask me to fix car airbag computers and parts of their fridge, and I'm just honest with them, and I tell them, I'm, I'm not set up for this, and may, maybe I could do it, maybe I couldn't, but it's possible I could do it. Maybe I do a good job, maybe I do a horrible job. I don't know because that's not what I do, and I'm not going to do something that I don't think I can do well. If I don't think I can do it well without putting in an amount of effort into retooling my business and relearning what I'm doing for this one job that will only pay me once, that means I'm probably going to charge you an amount of money that isn't fair. If something is not feasible, like trying to do a video without closing the door so that Oreo stays outside, what I usually do is I just don't offer it. Am I missing out on some money that way? Yes, I'm sure I miss out on a lot of money. But there's something my dad said when I was very young that stuck with me. Anything worth doing is worth doing well. And he was talking about this when it came to work. Anything that you're going to do you should do well. If you're not willing to do it well, don't do it at all because your name is attached to it, your brand is attached to it, your reputation is attached to it, and at the end of the day, your dignity is attached to it. Don't do something that you cannot do well. It is very obvious at this point that Amazon is not doing what they're doing very well. I don't care if you think it's not feasible to do it well. But above all, if you're not able to do it well, why are we, and more importantly, why am I stupid enough to continue rewarding you with my money? Because I'm going to be honest here. The problem here is not somebody else. The problem here is me. I talked about this. I went to move from New York to New Hampshire. I went from New Hampshire to Texas. I went from a different city in Texas to another city in Texas. And every time I moved, I was resetting at my place. Oh, it'd be nice to have this. Oh, it'd be enough to have that. Wow, I can get this with next day shipping and it's this cheap? Yeah, sure, I'll try it out. And before you knew it, I, was, I had an entire room filled with crap that didn't even work. I'm not talking about products where it's a one-off that I got one defective unit. I'm talking about something where you could just tell from the way this was designed that functionally this had zero chance of ever working and ever doing what it was advertised to do, even if I got I bought this thing 10 times. But it had five stars. And what did I do? Did I, did I return it and then say, I'm deleting my Amazon account? No, I bought more crap. People like me are the problem. We are why Amazon made money. And what we can do to change this is we can stop doing this. We can go back to what we did before. I get so many comments in these videos from people saying, well, where should I go? What do I do? There's no choice. Really? Like there's no other website that sells what you want?
Yeah, I get it. Okay, you have to type your payment information in again. You have to type your info in again. Some of them may not even let you check out as a guest. You have to actually register an account. It's annoying, or dare I say, you may have to go to a physical store. But if what we're trading to get convenience is not really being comfortable with what I drive because it may go on fire because I put Amazon crap in it, I don't think that's a good trade anymore. <laughs> and neither does Oreo. How long do you think Amazon is going to continue to allow these products to stay up on their website? Weeks to months after Oreo did detailed videos documenting how they're dangerous, unsafe, and dare I say deadly. Uh, more importantly, how long do you think regulators will allow them to continue to resell these dangerous products on their website? It was funny because I was sitting down at a lunch with a couple of friends and I mentioned this video before I actually finished editing it and it was funny because one of them said, see, this is a great example of why libertarianism in free open markets would never work because the cheaters always wind up winning over the honest people when there's not a set of rules that they're all to follow. And then the other person said, and this is why government doesn't work because you have one. And instead of actually addressing the $3 trillion company that is breaking many consumer protection and safety laws, they spend their time auditing Lewis Rossman. I, don't know, I just kind of find that shit kind of funny. <laughs> the world's a meme at this point. You might as well just be along for the ride. And also enjoy it with a cat. This is Oreo. He's my kitty. Isn't he cute? I told you you could come up on the desk, kitty. Why don't you ever want to come up on the desk anymore? Come here. Who's a good kitty? I usually end these videos by saying that's it for today, and as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now. And one thing I can guarantee you by the next video that I'll see you in, all those products will still be on Amazon.com. With 4.6 to 5 stars and free next day shipping. So that you too can potentially set your car on fire. Check out this guy's channel, The Car Care Nut. Really cool dude. See you in the next video. Bye now.